the that front page of the Finder newspaper. Mm-hmm. French classes for 2,000 commences to serve French-speaking tourists better. This is coming from Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awa, this Minister of Tourism at, at Encounter. Charlie, did you see the video? He said uh, the, the funeral, funeral tourism. Hey, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. very sad story also on the front page of the paper. Radio Adra journalist. Oh, uh, has passed away as as yeah. Ochem Abuaji, yes, the uh, former MP for Bantu. Noah yeah. nah, Dame mm. has passed away, and then also the honorable Lee Palimo, uh, oh. a good friend, is also no more. Oh, uh, yeah. parliament announced that on their page. Oh, you oh, oh, you know, tell me, Charlie, yeah, oh, I Lee Palimo, he was he's been parliament since 92 Charlie, till Charlie, I think Charlie, 2013 Charlie, Charlie, or something. No, 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 he, he died in 2000, he, he was there since two, he was one of the. F- Earliest. The earliest, but he left Parliament. Nineteen ninety-three, yes, four years ago or something. Yeah, I think eight years ago, if my memory serves. Lake Palimoteria. Yeah, that's right. Bandai. Bandai. MP for Bandai. Good man. Good, oh, good, Charlie. Good man. He was just, my personal friend. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. One more headline from me on the front page of the Finder. We are just doing our work and not harassing traders. Jiri. Yeah, there's, there's a big meeting there's a between big meeting, Jiri yes. and the Kumasi's um, Guta yeah. over the, what they say discrimination. Uh, over treatment at the ports. Mm. So Let me that. take you to the BNFT. The big story says financial stocks rebound with 12% gain. Also, supply crunch supply crunch puts cocoa producers in driving seat. And then also, this thing about the petroleum sector uh, says that the petroleum upstream chamber uh, launches 2023 industry report. All right, get into the chronicle. The front page of the chronicle, Alan Cash to drop a political bombshell today. Mm. Is the question they're asking. So as to say, a third force is on the cards. Mm. Ferrata leads the battle to achieving climate goals. Okay. Let me take you to the Daily Guy. The big story says, no camping of delegates. MPP is warning flag bearer aspirants ahead of the... Uh, uh, primary is in uh, November. Also, we are told that Adokufo angry over one billion dollar rich tag. Charlie, mm. <laughs> people are saying all kinds of things. <laughs> uh, Ex-Bantama MPs, uh, Bantama MPs' death sparks controversy, and Light Foundation marks international peace. Okay, uh, moving they, to the yeah. Before you go though, there's something here that says protesters plan to occupy Mohammed's office. I don't know why anybody would think of doing that. That's on the front, front page, page of the Daily Guide. The new publisher also says on the. Matter of one million bribe, uh, one million dollar bribe allegation. Mm-hmm. Play the tape or go with you. But Obama <laughs> <laughs> incredibility crisis. Go with you. The story of the passing of uh, Chama Boaje also mm-hmm. missed the front page of the paper. Forty one Ghanaians wrought in Nigerian jail over QNET job scam. Hey. Let me take you to the Herald. The big story says Kuf- Kufuado orders GMPC to secure seven hundred million dollars in loan to settle debt created by his family business. Mm. And that is packing concerns, according to uh, the newspaper. Also, mm. Ghana's military sits on rape case against senior officer, mm. Alain Blue. Mm. And then government dishing out 300 million Ghana CDs to McDonald's salt business. Nagging questions are being raised. Mm. And then coming up, Kennedy Japan's days as Ghana Gas Board Chair numbered. Finally, from me, the front page of the custodian, the GRA story makes to the front page of the paper. Police apologizes for Occupy Jubilee House protest disruptions. All right. Uh, Baka Voma was also on the front page of the paper. Mm. Baumia suspends campaign for EC registration exercise. The Republic Press says this morning, Alan to resign and Alam is looking into space here on the front page. Also, a Greek minister denounces false uh, claims. To resign from what? Well, that's what they maybe maybe the MP. Ah, oh, okay, so, because he doesn't have any position. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, a Greek minister denounces false claims regarding road construction mm. and redeem your funding pledges, energy minister to developed countries. Okay. Moving on to the citynewsroom.com. A few more. Okay. Have you done the anchor? Yeah, no, no, no. So let's let me do just the do uh, the anchor and the Ghanaian publisher quickly. Okay. Uh, the uh, Ghanaian publisher says, Vo Mawo sweats over bribe lie. Lie is in quotes. Mm. Also, a Greek minister refused farmer's claim. If you go to the anchor newspaper, national security minister dares fix the country convener to release one million dollar attempted bribe mm. audio recording mm-hmm. and then something on the attacha committee says attacha advocates partnerships says we can't rely on governments to reap full benefits all right let me take you on a few more headlines there was no concrete basis for three-day demo mpp youth wing on occupy the lobby house demo uh Kufo says i'm not the third richest person in Ghana. that story seems to be trending as well and then Ofankot, three-story building under construction collapses. 
Mm. And then Brian Champon denies wicked allegations of destroying farms in Kweu. Meanwhile, Tim and Sabozu describing Ochema Baji's death as painful. Citybusinessnews.com, two stories here which are somewhat contradictory. So Ghana's total exports declined by 9%. But we record over $200 million trade surplus in two months. So we need to compare those notes. City depreciates against the dollar by 22.5%. And then excise tax amendment shows positive signs, rakes in 140 million cities. If you go to Major Online, a couple of stories there for you. Uh, Ghana Water Company announces interruption in water supply from pond treatment plant. Mm. Um, I'm here for Ghanaians, not MPP. And this is Stone Boy on Occupied Jolobi House demo. And then here's an interesting one Banchiampesi reduces risk of colon cancer. Oh. You know, Agbeliko, <laughs> yeah, it reduces risk. <laughs> Of colon cancer, GNA is leader. Is that it's a research. They say banjian is good for your stomach. Mm. President yeah. Kufuado is speaking at the How UN. International committee must support Africa <laughs> and uh, efforts to resolve Africa's conflicts. Kufuado, GNA front page. Also, GJ condemns reported maltreatment of journalists during Thursday's demonstration. Mm. And then Professor J says, "Winner takes all. Provision of constitution must be reviewed." I'm just giving you a few more headlines. There's a very strange headline on the BBC's Africa page. What's that? Zambia's ex-president has been banned from political jogging. I checked this on the Lusaka Times, and they're basically saying the police in Zambia is warning against political activism during former president Lungu's jogging. You know this thing we've been doing, keep fit. Uh, they say they shouldn't do politics. They should jog, but don't keep fit. <laughs> no no politics. politics with it, Charlie. It's a very serious situation. So it's not just Ghana. France says they will withdraw from mm. Niger. So this is Bloomberg Africa. Macron in reversal says French soldiers will leave Niger. And quite a number of stories on Niger this morning as well. Okay, so let's take off this morning. There's a big press conference we expect to happen uh, mm -hmm. later today. Alan Kojo Chemanting would announce details of his political future. Mm. You know, he has told us that he will not be part of the 4th November mm -hmm. MPP primaries uh, because of some concerns he's raised. Now, mm -hmm. the Republic Press is saying this morning that Alan Chemanting, a prominent figure in Ghanaian politics and the former minister responsible for trade and industry, is reportedly considering resigning from the new patriotic party for the second time in his career. Now, this potential move comes in the wake of his disappointing third place finish in the MPP Super Delegates Conference, where he withdrew from the race ahead of the main election in November. Well, uh, later this uh, afternoon, we expect him to speak at the Mervyn Peak mm -hmm. Ambassador Hotel and we'll hear exactly the details of what he intends to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the Daily Guide, though, we are told that no camping of delegates, MPP mm. warns. Uh, as parents and that story uh, basically says that uh, it's by NS Kofi Edu and mm -hmm. it says the presidential election committee of the new patriotic party has issued guidelines for the November 4, 2023 primaries uh, which they which say which they say mm -hmm. shall be no uh, no I don't know they are, there's an issue which say they are, Ah, it doesn't make sense. There Basically, shall be no shall campaign, be no, uh, campaign as the registration delegates. goes uh -huh. on. No and then they also say that the guidelines also uh, noted that uh, accreditation will be uh, constituency specific mm -hmm. and that voters are expected to walk in freely by themselves mm -hmm. except physically challenge a person who may be... So this is camping of delegates exactly. ahead of the vote. There's also one that says Bamiya suspended his campaign. Yeah, yeah ahead have, of, because uh, of the... That story is on page three mm -hmm. of the custodian newspaper says that the vice president uh, a presidential aspirant for the New Patriotic Party has announced the suspension of his ongoing nationwide campaign to offer the NPP presidential primaries. He will use the campaign break to visit selected EC registration centers to encourage party faithful to focus mm -hmm. on mobilizing eligible persons to register for their voter ID card. So, mm -hmm. that was a from Gideon Boakun. Mm -hmm. Also, the page two of the same paper says uh, police apologizes for occupied Jubilee House protest disruptions. Uh, the Ghana police on Sunday apologized for the inconveniences experienced by the public during the three-day Occupy Jubilee House protest organized by the Democracy Hub Group in Accra. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the police would like to apologize to members of the police who were inconvenienced in one way or the other, especially those who were caught up in the vehicular holdups during the demonstration a statement issued by the police right. on Sunday. Now, let's do it. There's demonstration and national security's response to Oliver Bakavama. Well, that's in a number of pages. Yeah, if you go to the Anchor newspaper, they have that story. Mm -hmm. And then also, page three of the uh, Ghanaian publisher also has that story. So let me take you to the a Ghanaian publisher's version of the story says mm -hmm. that Vomawo uh, sweats over bribe lie 
And the story says, convener of the activist group Fix the Country, uh, Oliver Baka Vomawa, is facing mounting scrutiny over his allegation of bribery and threats from some officials of the government. Now, as the nation awaits concrete evidence of the allegations, the saga continues to unfold with questions surrounding the credibility of his claims. Now, Vomawa made um, bold claims of a clandestine meeting, bribery offers, and ominous threats from uh, prominent figures of government, including Honorable Albert Kandapa and Honorable Ken Oforiata, the Ministers for National Security and Finance. However, as the narrative unfolds, questions surrounding the credibility of these allegations have started to emerge, demanding clarity and evidence. And you know that last week, the National Security uh, Ministry issued a statement denying yeah. that they had held a meeting for yeah. purposes of bribing him with $1 million or offering him yeah. uh, positions in government and all, all that. All right, talking of denials, Dr. Kwame Adukufo says he is not the third richest man in Ghana. And this story, we don't know where it came from, but the story is on City News. Dr. Kwame Adukufo, a uh, stalwart of the MPP, former defense minister, has vehemently denied claims of being the third richest individual in Ghana. An anonymous individual on TikTok alleged that Dr. Adukufo has a net worth of $1.2 billion, making him the third richest person in Ghana. Responding <laughs> to this allegation, a statement with Adukufo's legal rep, Zoe Achia and Co., yeah. uh, described the allegations as vain, calculated to dent the hard and integrity of Dr. Kufo. We have the firm and unqualified instruction of our client to state in no uncertain terms mm -hmm. that he has no set levels of money and will exact the strictest proof of this vain allegation from the individual who is conveniently enjoying anonymity. <laughs> they are not happy. His lawyers maintain that the former board chairman of SNIT acquired his money through legitimate means. So mm -hmm. the letter is published on the website. And uh, I'll take you to page 9 of the Ghanaian chron of, uh, the chron Chronicle. Chronicle, yeah. And the GRA denies undue harassment of traders, importers, as alleged mm -hmm. by Guta and TAGG. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ghana Revenue Authority has stated that it employs various compliance and enforcement measures, such as visits to registered businesses and closing of shops due to failure of importers and traders to pay tax, among others. This was in reaction to uh, narratives being peddled in the media space by members of the Ghana Union of Traders Association and Traders Advocacy Group uh, Ghana, TAG. Uh, who have in recent times been complaining about the frequency of arrest of the accused by customs mm -hmm. monitoring task force, eventually leading to payment of heavy penalties by traders. They have also raised allegations of harassment and extortion mm -hmm. on the part of the customs. Task so there's force. a meeting <coughs> Tuesday to mm -hmm. resolve this matter, and we'll be following it. Yes, but my my, my my small concern with um, the story as written by Jennifer Amboli mm -hmm. is um, the writer says. Guta and tax assessing is false. How does the writer know, know this? this? Because exactly. the meeting that's going to resolve the matter. So, so how does the writer uh, then Jennifer Ambuli, and I then conclude how, that the, the, the how you have reached the conclusion that the narrative is false? All right, style. Let's stay with you. Okay, let's stay within the area of trade because there's a story on the front page of the Herald newspaper, the details of which are contained on page two. Mm. Government dishing out 300 million Ghana cities to Magdan Salt business. The paper mm. claims now the Herald has picked up reports of a suspicious 300 million. Ghana City transaction between the Minerals uh, Income Investment Fund, MIIF, mm. and Electrochem, the company that is running the Ada Songo Salt Project under a 15 year lease. Now, the MIIF, set up by Act 978 of 2018, is set to be busy in negotiations with the owner of Electrochem, Daniel Macaulay who doubles as the chief executive officer of the McDan Group of Companies towards owning 6% six, six stake in the privately owned salt project. Now, insiders are not happy with the negotiations, insisting that the state is being shortchanged by the parties. You can get mm -hmm. a copy right. of the newspaper. Let me give you some economic news. City depreciates against the dollar by 22.5%. Bank of Ghana has the depreciation of the cities to the dollar at 22.5% as of September this year. One will now need 11.07 CDs to exchange a dollar on the entire bank market. Oh. In the central bank's latest summary of economic and financial data, September 2023, <coughs> the city has also depreciated against the British pound by 24.9% and 22.8% against the euro. Comparing the performance of the city to the dollar from January to this month, it has marginally depreciated from 20.6 to 22.5. Mm. Then in other stories, Ghana records over $200 million trade surplus in two months. Mm. That's from the from the same document. And that it says that Ghana's trade balance grew by 13% from 1.78 billion recorded in July this year. Mm. But we had a decline in exports by 9% yeah. as well. So those, 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 those two seem contradictory. Okay, let me stay in that particular 
place because there's a story that says supply crunch puts cocoa producers in driving seats. Mm -hmm. That story is on page two of the Financial Times and mm -hmm. it says that uh, cocoa producers have emerged as the driving force behind cocoa market premiums as they continue to reap the benefits of a supply crunch according to the latest international cocoa organization cocoa market report released this particular month. Mm -hmm. Now again if you stay with that newspaper there's a story on page three that says financial stocks rebound with 12% gain mm -hmm. and that story says that there appears to be a potential turnaround in listed financial stocks as the GSE FS FSI uh, that tracks uh, their performance has registered an 11.89% gain over the four weeks leading mm -hmm. to close of um, last Friday, September 2022-2023 trading. All right, well, well, let me give you two quick today. stories from the publisher. Mm. Uh, they announced the passing of the uh, Honorable Daniel Ochem Abu Aji from the oh, Parliament uh, for Bantama, mm. and um, there's a very nice write-up on him. And also on the same page, mm. that's our story. A security man has died mm. when a medical oxygen cylinder exploded wow. in the Eastern Regional Hospital in Kofodia. Mm. According to eyewitnesses, the security man whose name was given as O Master was helping to offload medical oxygen cylinders when the 10.0 cubic meter chamber exploded. He sustained head injuries and was rushed to the intensive care unit of the hospital where he was placed in the later, but passed on later. Still on death, the deputy station coordinator of Radio Ada Noah Na Dame was on trial for allegedly publishing false news by uh, Magdan is dead. 49-year-old passed away at his home. The cause of his death is not yet known, mm -hmm. but according to close family sources, he had been struggling with poor health since he was released from police custody in April 2023. Mm -hmm. He left behind three children and two grandchildren. Really, really sad story. Now, I wanted yeah. to give you... We say all the people who departed, uh, may their souls rest in... Yeah, a public service announcement. Ghana Water Company is interrupting water supply it's from the corn yeah. treatment plant. Mm. So areas to be affected include Bechile, Afienya, Zenu, Pram Pram, Matahiko, Katamanso, Dowenya, Sakumono, Bachona, Klagon, Tema Township, Ajay Koju, Boteman, Santo, and surrounding areas. Mm. And then I'll end with <clears throat> this one. Edunyame Foundation. Is that, the name sounds familiar. Empowers young girls artisanal cluster of schools. The Edunyami Foundation, mm. led by Frema Edunyami, mm. hey. made a significant impact on the lives of young girls at the Tessano Cluster of Schools hey. through okay. the Aketesia Project okay. on Thursday, September uh, 14, 2023. Yeah. The initiative aimed at empowering yeah. over 200,000 young girls brought together 160 students aged between 11 and 17 for a workshop uh -huh. on crucial topics such as reproductive health, Thank you. child labor, and career development. Uh -huh. These topics are considered fundamental for the holistic development of young individuals and the Dujami Foundation's commitment to empower young girls through education and awareness is evident in the Akitesia project. Akitesia. Nobody is not a good la, la. for the project. <laughs> in fact, we are using the project to, 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 to advise girls against people who sing their songs. <laughs>